Tesla claims to have created a new internet protocol that's better than TCP. So Alex, have they really reinvented the wheel here? Sure have. They've invented TTP, the Tesla Transfer Protocol, and the closely related TTPOE, Tesla Transfer Protocol over Ethernet. So these are protocols they invented for use in their supercomputer. So they have built a supercomputer they call Dojo, where they have loaded millions of hours of video from all the cameras on the Teslas, and they're trying to use it to do, you know, AI training to teach the cars to be self-driving. To do that, they decided they needed their own special networking protocol to reach the super low latencies, super high speeds that they need in the supercomputer. So how is this different from TCP, UDP, or other protocols? So the main protocols of the internet are TCP IP running on top of IP, the internet protocol. TCP is a transmission control protocol. These two together give you sort of reliable connections to upload, download a file, do a call. They're open standards, first released in 1981. They, they, they keep upgrading it, of course. I mean, it's much better than what we had back then, but these are the workhorse protocols of the internet. TTP, much more specialized. It isn't meant even to work over the internet. It's meant to work in this one supercomputer. So I think they're just not handling all sorts of problems. TCP has to work over Wi-Fi, it has to work over Ethernet, it has to work over cellular, it has to handle packet loss, it has to handle, you know, all these things that you see in the real world. This TTP only has to work on Dojo. So they can strip out any feature they don't think they need and get a smaller thing. And then they end out with a protocol so small and simple, they can actually stick the implementation all the way down into the Ethernet card. So now it's not even the CPU or the computer doing it anymore. It can just magically say, send this out. And it's sent out with you know, no work of framing it up into packets and things. How much latency are we talking? We're talking super low latency. These are computers in the same data center together, tied together by super fast cables. I saw something about 80 microseconds of latency as a high end. So it's not meant to cover everything. It's just for covering their supercomputer. So I've heard of other super fast supercomputer protocols like InfiniBand. Why is this new Tesla protocol necessary if that already exists? That's not so clear to me. InfiniBand is a protocol for high speed networking inside of the, these massive servers. And it works and it's been around for years and it's super fast and it's super low latency. Tesla was putting out some numbers which showed a tiny bit better latency. But it really was getting down into, you know, numbers so small, it's hard to imagine it making a difference. Could it just be that Tesla wants to license this for themselves? Yeah, I mean, it could be that they want the licensing revenue of selling this to someone. They might just want the fine-grained control to know they can tweak anything. After all, you know, most AIs, there are lots of people training AIs, but they're training them on huge amounts of text. They're training them on unbelievable amounts of video. So they are a little different than you know, at least most of the other people. They do have these special use cases and I bet their performance is a little different. And I bet they like having those little knobs and screws that they can tweak anything themselves to fix any problem they had. That makes sense. So do you see this Tesla protocol affecting anything outside of their own Dojo supercomputer? They've been talking about opening it up and letting others use it. From everything I've read, it certainly seems like it's a supercomputer thing. It's not clear to me how much, is it so much better than InfiniBand that the people using InfiniBand would switch to it? Is it so much cheaper? They do talk about using, you know, just ethernet. So maybe it does work out to be cheaper in the long run. So if this protocol is so fast, will it replace Speedify? No, I mean, obviously, it's a neat protocol. It's made for a different use case. The interesting thing is, you know, TCP, if you don't know what protocol to use, you probably should use TCP for, you know, if you're writing software to connect some things. If you don't know, that's it. But then when you dig really far in and start getting into one specific use case, you almost always realize you can do better than TCP because TCP is meant to work almost everywhere. So as you start looking at just supercomputers, you come to the conclusion, I could do better, Tesla did. And so they built a protocol that's better than TCP for use inside supercomputers. We're just looking at mobile people with Wi-Fi and cellular trying to stream video, do video calls. And you start looking at that use case and you say, I can do better than TCP. And so, you know, we created the Speedify protocol, which does in fact do much, much better than TCP. But you know, the, the two don't compete, they're for, for different domains. And TCP, well, you know, it works everywhere. So Speedify has its own protocol. Yeah, built on top of a combination of TCP and UDP. We use both depending on which makes sense. Uh, sometimes we use multiple TCP sockets at the same time in order to get even better reliability and speed than anyone can provide. But yeah, we have our own protocol, just like Tesla. <laughs>
That's it. For more connectivity tech discussions like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button.